Hey, all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm Darren, I'm your host, and today I've got another great guest. We're going to talk to Mr. Dennis Shewitt. He is the owner and creator of Duck Fat Spray. I can't wait to talk to Dennis about how he uh, stumbled upon duck fat and how he got it in a spray can. I'll be right back with Dennis Shewitt of Duck Fat Spray. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Hey all, I want to welcome back Inkbird Products as a sponsor of the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Inkbird makes some great thermometers, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, all that. But they also make a great instant read thermometer that I really love. It's waterproof, totally rechargeable with USB, very accurate. Everybody should have one of these in their kitchen so they can check the internal temperatures of their food so they don't end up overcooking. Check out the waterproof instant read thermometer below and a link to Amazon from Inkbird. Welcome back, Inkbird Products. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm Darren, I'm your host, and today I've got another great guest, Mr. Dennis Shute, Shuty, Shuty, right? Uh, Shuett, close Shuett. enough. Okay, and he is the owner of Corn Husker Kitchen. They are the makers of duck fat spray, and actually, I have some right here. So in case you didn't know what duck fat spray is, you've probably seen this around. Um, I th think I first contacted you back about a year, almost two years ago, yeah. Dennis, when you were just getting started. So introduce yourself, tell people where you're from, what you do. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Dennis Hewitt. I'm, a, I'm a, I guess, the inventor of duck fat cooking spray. Um, I live in Nebraska. I'm in Omaha. I've uh, been here about 25 years and hail from Grand Island, Nebraska, in the middle of the state. And um, anyway, uh, I have a partner in this business. He's a little silenter and, than myself. And uh, we've been at this now probably going on about four years. And, and uh, it's, it's really uh, found its place in the culinary world. And, and uh, you know, we just keep finding new things out about how well our product works and how well it doesn't work uh, along the way. So. We're trying to address them as we go. So um, before you got started with duck fat spray, what did you do for a living? What, what made you stumble upon duck, duck fat spray? How did you get started? Well, I'm an old grocery guy from way back. I was in, I worked, I worked uh, when I was in my early 20s. Um, I was in the stores, actually. I was in the produce, um, in the produce business, produce manager for a Nash Finch company and my dad was a grocery buyer for Nash Finch, and he, he was for 45 years, and so uh, uh, that was a long time ago, and as I, uh, as I went through the ranks of grocery, I then became a food broker and represented companies like ConAgra and Ocean Spray and Uncle Ben's and, and put the suit and tie on, and, and uh, we were agents for those brands to go in and call on grocery, and and um, and uh, gain distribution and, and shelf space and promotion and, and manage their businesses in, in throughout the Midwest. Now, so, is that something like a U.S. food or a Cisco or somebody like that? Or it's a little different than that. Um, we we're not order takers when we're doing that uh, all the time. Like uh, U.S. foods, um, you know those uh, those people go in and call on their certain accounts and actually write the day in day out orders. Where we don't do that, uh, ours is more about promotion, um, and um, and the the physical product, making sure it gets on shelves and gaining authorizations and and those kind of things. So it's a little different than food service by quite a bit, but but uh, kind of the same in some realms. So that's how you got started, and then you kind of stumbled upon the duck fat. Just yeah, well that that wasn't the end of uh, of my corporate life, I went to work for a company called Data Transmission Network. And um, <clears throat> DTN here in Omaha uh, sends time sensitive information out to different um, uh, segments of business, like their biggest one was agriculture, uh, really time sensitive market information, weather, 
uh, reports, that kind of thing. And they had different divisions and they started a division that was called DTM Produce. I was director of sales for the US in Canada. So I would go out and travel and work with the reps in the different growing areas. Uh, one day I might be in, in, in Bronx, New York at South Point, uh, working with the rep, calling on them, trying to, to get those companies to install our device that gave them time sensitive FOB pricing. My partner uh, is the same person who started that company and brought me to that company back then, Roger Broderson. And uh, so we've been at the hip for a long time. I was his employee for several years. And then I had a crazy idea to start a miniature golf course in Omaha with rock climbing and batting cages. That was 21 years ago. And um, we've had that in a couple of restaurants and did some other things. And how we stumbled upon the duck fat uh, was five years ago for sure. And it was uh, essentially me and my buddies having some beers and, and uh, talking about food like we do. And I was talking about a Coney, Coney dog sauce that, that we made and how we got the old Greek recipe. And uh, the main ingredient in that Greek recipe for this ground meat chili sauce that the, the true Coney Islands use is uh, beef tallow, beef fat. Mm -hmm. And so we were buying beef fat from, uh, from a very large uh, render, a uh, food grade quality uh, fat render. Um, they did several other things. And um, anyway, during the time I was with the guys, I was telling them about that. And the other guy said, well, you should try duck fat sometimes. So I brought it up to, our, to my uh, company that I was buying the beef fat. He said, well, that's funny you should ask. He said, we now are rendering duck fat because of one of their large customers that needed duck meat. And duck fat is always a byproduct of ducks. A duck doesn't die for its fat, he dies for its meat, and yeah. we're able to use a byproduct, which is awesome. So anyway, I got a tub of it. I started Googling around and learning how to cook with it and doing the fries and and then some other, you know, putting a dollop on some steak. And this is this is more in you know in a in a jug form. Right. And um, anyway, I just learned about how its smoke point was really high. Um, it wasn't overpowering. It had high omega-3, omega-6, all the great things. But I also caught on to something that was unique about duck fat as an animal fat. And that is that it has a, a, it has a melting point of about 58 degrees. There isn't any other animal fat that has that. They're all way up there. Right. Yeah, you so can't. Like, you, oh, you wow. couldn't have. You couldn't have a spray, uh, exactly. beef, beef tallow or uh, lard. No. <laughs> you would have to introduce other components to that fat to right. get it to melt. Uh, uh, alcohol, or I don't even know what it would be for sure, but it'd be something along those lines. So, I thought this would be awesome in a spray. So then I learned the spraying industry, and that's a massive industry with all kinds of different processes. And um, we settled on bag on valve. And that process essentially, if you can imagine a, a, a boxer's workout bag hanging there, um, that's what it looks like inside our cans. But that workout bag is full of duck fat in our case. On the outside of that bag, but inside the can is just clean compressed air. And that's what forces that duck fat out when you hit the actuator. Um, if it's really cold, it's not going to come out that nice. It's going to come out more like a shaving gel or something along those lines, or not come out at all. Right. So it works if it's at the right temp and if your nozzle don't plug that a lot of folks have went through. And that's why, as you saw in your can, we have a new actuator. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not having that problem anymore. We're having some other little issues with the caps falling off and that kind of thing. But um, I think we've cured the, um, I think we've cured the plugging problem for the most part. It won't be perfect because it's, it's an aerosol, but it'll be a lot better than, than where we're, where we came from as we went through the process. Yeah. I think when I, I, I first had, had it, you know, two years ago or so. And, um, I think there was an issue with the, with the cans, um, every once in a while, like maybe one yeah. out of six would have an issue with it. So, right. Yep. And, um, but 
still you could get it to work you just monkey it around with it or what have you yeah i uh, take it off put it in the microwave a little dish of water yeah. tip, put it back on that kind of thing and and so we really worked on not only what we could do to help fix it but also what our supplier which has changed over the years what they can do as far as uh oops sorry uh screening <laughs> screening the product and uh through the different screening process uh to make sure that it's uh it's very uh, fine and pure and um you know it was kind of crazy when i was looking into the uh spraying world um nobody for the most part that's in the spray uh cooking oil business owns their own plant they use a co-packer whether it be right. conagra and pam and so on and so forth so i think i checked with probably every uh co-packer in the united states from LA to New York to down in Florida to everywhere. And um, I even had samples done. And that's when, I, that's when I found out this is going to work. But then I would always get this call a week later that, hey, you know what, we can't even, we can't even fill your product. We shouldn't have did the samples because the difference is it's an animal fat. And then the USDA guidelines animal fats have to be packed in a US, USDA uh, facility, inspected facility. These are all FDA, the entire nation. So we ended up buying, I researched the bag on valve enough that we ended up buying our equipment, placed our equipment in Wichita in a Native American owned facility. And um, and that's how it works. Then they, they do our filling for us and I ship everything into them and, and uh, there you have it. So not only did you have to come up with the idea of actually putting the duck fat in a can, you had to invent how to put it in the can and find some, or actually buy all the equipment to do it yourself because you couldn't find somebody to do it for you. <laughs> so, yeah, that would have been so that, you know, I had this all figured out when I thought that one of the co-packers would, would be able to fill it. Um, I just thought this is going to be easy. Right. I'm mean, like really easy. And, um, you know, there's only two actuators in the whole world that actually handle uh, oil. There's only two kinds that handle this viscosity of oil. And uh, so there was a lot of really niche things that I found out about about doing this. That, that's good for us at this point, too. I mean, so that's probably why nobody thought of doing this before because they saw it, it was just too many things that you had to actually, you know, do yeah. to, to get it, to create it. So it Maybe wasn't so. something. Yeah. <laughs> because like you said, you know, if they actually, you couldn't, you know, the same plants that do the olive oil or Pam or, you know, vegetable type oils, they can't do the, the can't do it. animal fats and nobody it really thought of a pretty, pretty big animal to swallow to, to make it happen. Yeah. So I know, I know people have been using duck fat for years. I mean, you know, French restaurants have used it. They, you know, use it on chicken for skin and all that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, people have been used buying tubs of it. And it's very still kind of rare, though. It's not like going and buying butter. You got to kind of search it for is. it, go to specialty restaurants and all that. How hard is it for you to get enough, you know, in a commodity to make this? Because now you're in like stores like Walmart and Target and, you know, you're not just in a specialty yeah. grocery store anymore. Or right. Place. You're everywhere. In an update on Walmart, we're pulling out of a lot of Walmart. Uh, we're going to be in some of the Walmart. We're going to be in WalMarts that have the right demographic for our product, which I'm just totally fine with. And we are not in Target yet, just to clarify. Okay. But we, but we are in a lot of places. But uh, um, um, that is an issue. If there was two or three of us in this arena, no one would be able to afford to buy a can of duck fat spray. Because here's the deal, especially now I'll throw COVID in this last year. The restaurants weren't open. They weren't serving duck. Ducks right. weren't being killed. So that tightened everything up. I have a great supply right now. And uh, I'm very happy about that and blessed to have that. And it's allowing us to do other animal fats, not in a spray, but we have several in, in you know, different sizes of duck fat and beef fat and, and pork lard and things. But uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's not an unlimited commodity, like you said. It's all, um, you know, it, it, 
it's a variable with how much duck are being uh, consumed. And so it's not like yeah. I can import a bunch of this from China or someplace like that. You know <laughs> right. I mean? Yeah. Like I said, but you know, fortunately you're the only one that's, you know, actually producing, you know, the duck fat spray. So, yeah, but it's still, it's still not as big a commodity as like beef tallow or, or pork, pork lard or something like that, because exactly those all over the place for, you know, mainstream. So, um, yeah. I was going to think is it has to be kind of hard for you. Do you have a, a steady, like just one supplier? Do you have multiple suppliers? Do you have, um, I, I only use one supplier currently and, um, they can get me tens of thousands of pounds a month, you know, for me, um, which is awesome. And, um, I have other suppliers, uh, who, uh, have a supply. And so I've got a little bit of a plan B, uh, but you know, um, it's still, it's tight and the price really went up on the actual raw ingredient this spring, like, like a dollar a can for me, my cost oh. just for the raw ingredient, which is all based on supply and demand. I mean, it's paleo, it's keto, it's it's omega three, omega six for the heart. You know, it's getting more notoriety, notoriety, and and you'll see the jars now in a Kroger store, and you'll see the jars in in different places, and and so uh, there's more distribution than there used to be, for sure. Oh, definitely, and I can, you know, and Amazon, I know, has got got it and had it for a while, so. Oh yeah, uh, several. I mean, I'm sure you're doing a lot through them. Um, I am. So when you first came up with the idea and you put it, you know, discuss, you know, d did all the work and getting the can and everything, how hard or easy was it to actually go out and sell it to retailers and say, Hey, I, you know, you need to put this on your shelf. Uh, traditional grocery is tough. Um, that's tough. Yeah. Cause yeah. this is a product they never had before. And they're like, well, I've got Pam, I've got olive oil on in spray and all this other stuff. What's right. this better or different? And, and you want me to sell this for 10 bucks yeah. versus the $2 can. So or yeah, buy one, get one free. It's like, in, you know, like yeah. for Pam, you can get it for like three bucks a, a can, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's a, and even though I came from that arena, I'd been out of it for several years and it changed. It got very expensive to play there. And, um, we're in, you know, we, we essentially Walmart, um, fell in love with it right away, which to me, I wasn't expecting that using a, using a broker, you know, to make that presentation. And, um, um, my biggest growing segment and my focus is meat markets, barbecue supply, patio, Ace Hardware's. Uh, yeah. we're on, yeah, we're onboarding right now with corporate A's. So, yeah, I mean, and th those are the people that experiment, they, they understand it. They're, they're the people that, you know, I deal with most of the time cause I, I mix sous vide and barbecue. And so I'm, I'm dealing with two different types of people. Are you there? I apologize. That's all right. That's all right. There you go. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the type of people I deal with that are always cooking and it. playing with stuff and I experimenting. And, um, when I first saw it, that's what got me excited about it. And the people that followed me were like, yeah, man, duck fat, that sounds great. Cause they know, you know, that, um, it's one of the great ingredients to use on, you know, chicken and, and fries and all that kind of stuff. And, oh yeah. And Veggie, I think everything. I think, you know, making it in a can and a spray form, it makes it even more versatile and you can use it in a lot more uh, functions than you could just by buying, you know, the tub of it and, and using it yeah. uh, um, in, the, in the hard fats, you know, side. So. Well, in the competitive world of barbecue, the KCBS people and as well as um, um, the State Cook-Off Association, yeah. um, they... Uh, they, um, have really embraced my product, uh, and they're getting some really great results with it. And, um, you know, that's just like so wonderful and they're great people to deal with. So definitely. And they're the ones that are going to, you know, help you sell it. <laughs> that's the thing. So they I'm are. Pull, I, they I are. Pulled they're, up. They're, they're pulling me through. 
I pulled up the uh, your website here, and I'm sharing that, so you probably see that on your screen as well. That's so, awesome. Um, and it just kind of breaks down everything for you, you know, how how it uh, can, you know, all the different uh, health benefits to it, the different um, ways you can use it. You got recipes on here, uh, all kinds of stuff that, um, you know, people that don't know, go ahead and go right to uh, duckfatspray.com. And everything you want to know about the duck fat spray, but also yeah. you, said you you also I'm going to go to the buy now because you also have chicken fat, <laughs> but now it's not in a spray can form. No, but I don't think I've ever seen anybody sell rendered chicken fat before. So it was a kind of a new one to me, but um, I guess it's uh, it's wonderful to take a spoonful of that when you're making a base for a roux or a soup. It's just like incredible. So, yeah, yeah for well, seasoning, yep. it's it's poultry. So I'm sure it's it's a similar to uh, duck, right? Fat, but, but does that also um, have a, a melting point like duck fat, or is it actually? Unfortunately, it's higher. Yeah, it's higher as well. It's higher. So, like the, okay. Yeah, it is. Um, so, and then it looks like you don't just have regular old, you know, commercial lard. You've got the Magalista uh, lard. So that's a wonderful <laughs> story. That's our, I'm the only one that sells at, well, I'm the selling arm for the Mangalista. It's LT's, E-L-T-E-E-S, Mangalista, LT's Mangalistas. And Mangalistas are actually a, a, a variety of hog uh, from the heritage breeds, right. uh, much like the Berkshires and some of the others. It's a big gnarly looking beast and with an unbelievable fat content on it. And the pork is incredibly expensive, but it is like nothing you've ever had before in pork. And uh, there's a, a family, the Savota family from Pender, Nebraska, up north, and they raise these hogs. And um, uh, they sell the meat at farmer's markets and they've got a little bit of distribution, but then we, uh, then I helped them and I brought their lard to market. And so uh, we're doing, I'm doing really well with the one and a half tubs of, of, of lard, but that stuff is, beyond reproach if you're baking or doing anything. If you're a Blackstone user, I just used it to season my, my brand new 17 inch. I got a little one for the tabletop on my patio and it just seasoned it wonderfully. So it's it's got a high smoke point too and all the good stuff. I gotta give the Mangalista folks a little plug. They really have a special, a special animal and a great product. Yeah, I'm sure that um, that's something that you just can't buy anywhere. That's for sure. <laughs> so yeah, um, no. and, but my my, my uh, barbecue supply place is uh, like here in town, helping you barbecue and and several other Corti Brothers, uh, which is a high end grocery out in San Francisco, and several other stores are now carrying it too. So it's have getting, you uh, uh, getting have you approached there. Atlanta Grill Company down there in Roswell, Georgia? I know they're they're really big. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're my. Uh, they they sell my. Um, they sell our uh, our spray, and they have uh, they have for a long time. Great people, um, but uh, we're going to have kind of a uh, email blast going out about all of our tubs here coming up in the next week or two. Gotcha, but yeah, because you know, to me, that's something. You know, that's another thing that nobody else can really get is is something like that. You know, you can get you know commodity you know pork lard, pork lard. but yeah, Not, nothing like, different. Yeah, yeah, nothing like the heritage breeds. That's for sure. So nothing's like, added to it. Nothing's taken away when we're, during the rendering. Like a lot of the lards, they have bleach. Uh, you know, just different nasty stuff put into it. So lye and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, on your website, you kind of tell the 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 story and and what uh, the duck fat spray can do for you. And like I said, oh, you do sell the, the tubs of regular duck fat we as well so i mean is your main business still and you look no doubt going to be the no duck doubt. fat spray yeah it, it really is but uh breaking news um i am going to have a line of uh in october um of duck bone broth oh okay jars 16 ounce jars um flavors like black pepper orange uh pho pho fo right. uh, however yeah. a ramen and um and an original um so we're kind of excited about that that's another trend 
but another way to use um this is great bone broth i didn't know much about bone broth until six months ago <laughs> but it's yeah. something people sip and and they also use it for cooking and it's a cleanse and all these good things and uh so uh i'm gonna give it a whirl and because it's there i just need to put a label on it and um we i really like the flavors of it i've sent some to some of our instagram um ambassadors and uh they absolutely love it and they are real chefs i'm i'm not i'm a backyard guy and right and uh um, yeah bone broths then, have been you know catching on in the last couple of years you know yeah i guess so the health food type industry people really get on them and uh, yeah, there's all kinds of different if you go on amazon just type in bone oh, broth you'll see there's a it's whole crazy lot. yeah and powders yeah all kinds of stuff so. so yeah, I mean, it's it's it just amazes me, and I, I've I've talked about this with everybody that I have on my podcast. Just the the things that we have now to be able to use in our cooking and you know, inside and outside with the technology, mm -hmm. with all the different, you know, the pellet grills and the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, even in the thermometers. I just had uh, the one of the guys that's uh, the from the meat stick the CEO of the meat stick, who's the, the wireless, completely wireless oh, yeah. thermometer that you can use on your phone and everything. I mean, all that kind of stuff. And, and I, I put duck fat spray in there because it wasn't around, you know, six years ago, you know, this yep. is something that you kind of created from nothing. So, um, yeah, it's been kind of fun. Well, just, uh, my wife said, you better figure something out. We were running out of time. And so <laughs> hopefully this one will work. I've always been entrepreneurial. Yeah. But, um, well, you had the background and in, in, in the uh, in the food brokerage, so you kind of it was something yeah. you were familiar with. But then again, it's now it's your own baby. Nobody else is doing it. Yeah. Do you have like a patent on all this stuff? That you have a fear of anybody coming out behind you and saying, "Okay, well, look how good Dennis is doing with this. I'm going to go ahead and steal his concept and you know have like you know Conagra or somebody swoop out and." Well, I mean that can always happen, and. You know, when you don't invent the process, you know, bag on valve's been around, um, you know, it's really, we have a lot of uh, national and international trademarks and different things, duck fat spray, and that is our trademark. Um, some of those things that we, you can do to protect ourselves. But here's the deal. If anybody wants to try it, I say, you know, try it if you'd like, <laughs> but here's what you'll have trouble with. And I'm not trying to tell anybody not to follow their dream, but is it's really difficult to get one can of duck fat spray on the shelf to go in and try to get a buyer to take two or to kick the one out that the customers are getting used to. That's just a really difficult path. Yeah. And, um, um, and the price, um, the price is, is not, it, it's not, it's not going down, unfortunately, for a lot of these kind of commodity things. And I'll tell you something else about the price of duck fat and that just quickly. Uh, and then on top of that, earlier in the year, California outlawed foie gras. Wow. <laughs> which is fine with me, but it sure limited the amount of ducks also that were being eaten in, hence, sure. less duck. It's just like it kept, kept getting hit from all these different different places. So, No, it definitely would be they'd have to uh, start from scratch like you. But like I said, if it was somebody like a ConAgra that can you throw a lot of money at it. and uh, They'd be better off just buying me. Yeah, but, buying you out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they'll have their distribution. So. Yeah. And, you know, hey, and that might be, hey, you're retired. You, you, you started all this. You worked hard and you can uh, earn a reward from it. So uh, that would be OK. Just, I, don't, yeah. I don't need much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. You know, somebody buy me out. I'd be happy to, you know, let me just go <laughs> Absolutely. Sit, on, sit on an island somewhere and, you know. That's what I like to do. I like to fish and drink a cold beer and, and chill out a little bit. Now, how often do you get out on the road? Are you still actively out there pursuing um, retailers anymore? Or are you kind of sitting I, back? And... Yeah, I've been sitting back um, um, because they're just not taking appointments. Yeah, that's, well, I know the COVID that's, that's and salt, loosening, yeah. yeah, that's loosening up. Um, you know, I was at the World Food Championship last year. I uh, went to several other different things. Ace Hardware's deal. Uh, Brad Barrett over at Grill Grates has uh, pretty much been my mentor from the beginning and they actually sell the product, but he really gives me uh, a tremendous amount of guidance and, and for being a guy who's uh, got a wonderful product and, and takes the time to help out 
it's just not me. It's guys who are starting spice companies and different things and other stuff that I know he's done the same for. And, and, um, it's, uh, it's just a really wonderful, the barbecue community is like no other in the grilling community. It's just, yeah, unbelievable. I've, they're, they're I've the best. found that I found that, you know, and, and it's not a, they're not egotistical in any way. They're always, no. they're not competitive. They're always looking to help everybody else. I mean, they are. E even people that do what I do, you know, on the YouTube or the podcast, yep. they're not competitive. They're not competing against each other. It's like, I've had guys on like Malcolm Reed and meathead Goldwyn and stuff. And they're not competing with anything I do. I mean, even though we do something similar, they're more than happy to come on and give you advice yeah. and help you out. So, I Just mean, that's, grow the community. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, and especially guys like us, you know, or like you, that you start something, you know, you, you can really appreciate it, you, especially like with Brad, you know, he started grow greats himself, you know, in his garage and look where it is now he can appreciate what you did with duck fat, you know, the duck fat spray because he was there and he, and he loves it. it which and is he loves, awesome. Yeah. And, and you know, you always like supporting things that you like and, you know, and appreciate that what people had to do to get it going. So definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they just, just the whole, uh, the whole bunch of them have been just wonderful. All right. So let's talk about this. So what can you put this on? Pretty much anything, right? Yeah, pretty much. I use it. I literally use it every day. I'll start in the morning. If I'm going to fry an egg, that's a no brainer. Uh, just a little spray in the pan. It just, it'll float uh, an egg across a, a really average frying pan. It just has the ability to do that because you can get the pan cranking pretty good. Like with butter, you'll burn it pretty quick, the butter. Right. Yeah. With all it, the solids on it. Oh, right. God. Yes. I mean, I spray it on things I don't need to, even like sausage, just to get them going. Uh, links and stuff like that. And the other thing, it was, this is crazy. We'll get back into food, but I have a couple of rescue dogs and, and uh, we feed them dry dog food. I'll give their dog food a spray. And I'll tell you what, it's wonderful for their coat. They'll eat better. And yeah. so if you have a dog that's a little finicky or something, wanted to eat a little more, give it a little spray or a cat and they absolutely love it. So and it's, and it's good for them. But right. uh, anyway, I use it, uh, um, I obviously use it on steaks. I use it on seafood. I mean, it just, nothing does salmon like this. I have a beefer at home and I have a right. uh, uh, blackstone and I have a green egg. And um, like with my beefer, I'll put a piece of uh, salmon in there and just hit it pretty good and use it as a binder for my, my little bit of seasoning, old bear, whatever I might be doing with my salmon. Nothing, I don't get too fancy. I mean, it just works so great. And for chicken breast, uh, like the KCBS guys have told me, is that it just, it does something to that skin where, you, where the judge gets a good bite through and it doesn't leave the skin rubbery when you right. use the duck fat spray. And that's yeah. like, maybe I'm telling a secret, but um, I have a lot of people in competition, especially steak cook-off association, more than half of them use it now. And... Um, so that's what I, when I first started using it, um, that's what I'd use it on a, a, you know, when I'm smoking chicken, you know, a whole chicken rotisserie yeah. chicken, because it does, you know, it, it, it does have that poultry taste to it and it, and it, but for some reason it does let the skin crisp up more than if you put anything else on it. So, I mean, yeah. you know, and I know that they've used it in French. That's what they use it in fresh rest, French restaurants for is cooking chicken. Oh, yeah. All well, the time. There's there's a region there's a region of France called uh, southern France it's called Gascony, and in that area the primary um, uh, cooking fat is duck, right. and um, they have about one fifth of the um, one fifth of the heart related illnesses as the United States do in that whole region, and, and doctors I mean it is attributed because of the high omega-3, omega-6, to, I mean, I mean, they just, they have a healthy hearts over there, and it's yeah. all attributed to using duck fat, so, uh, but <clears throat> on the cooking side, the gardens are just coming in, the root vegetables, and all these different things, wow, you'll never, I mean, a, a pan of zucchini sliced up, or crookneck squash, it's just really unbelievable to roast with. 
Duck fat fries are one of my favorite too. Is uh, mine too. Yeah, mine too. Sp spraying it on there, just stick them in the air fryer, and um, you know, with duck fat spray on them, and it's they're awesome. So let me ask you another question because I know also in France they cook with goose fat as well. Is yeah. goose is goose fat similar? I mean, will it will it have the same melting point as duck fat, or it's still got a little higher melting point, but just a hell of a lot less of it. Yeah, there's, it's not as commoditized. And now, sure. you go over to the UK and that, you're going to find a lot more goose fat. It's your number one fat over there. But um, over here, it's just there's just not a lot of it. Right. But could you possibly do it like as a specialty item to do a, a can of goose fat? Potentially. We yeah. have some. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this we have question, some. I just know yeah. that the goose fat's, you know, a popular over in Europe for cooking oh, as yeah. well. So. But like in a culinary gift basket or something, that would be really something to have a, yeah. a can of goose it, fat. It wouldn't be something you'd that. stick on the Walmart shelf, that's for sure. <laughs> no, it'd probably be like $20 a can, but gotcha. you wouldn't use it probably as often as the duck fat. Right. So do you still have retailers contacting you getting to get you on the shelf? or? Yeah, I. It's. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It's almost daily. Uh-huh. And these are the gourmet and the kitchen stores, the grill, the uh, patio, outdoor living stores, um, and they, they Ace Hardware's because they're all there's five thousand of them. They're all independently owned. Right. And um, barbecue supply and meat markets every week, every week, and I love them ones at a time. But I love it. I ship them direct. I ship them direct. So everything comes through you. Uh. Yeah, for the most part, um, I do have some, I have like Cahey, which is a very large distributor that handles the Walmart and Albertsons down in Texas and, and um, um, some of those, uh, Central Markets, uh, which is a division of HEB, uh, some of those stores that's handled through a distributor. But I, I deal with very few distributors at this point. I do have a network, uh, but I'm always looking for different, different ones of uh, sellers out there that are more private contractors. And they're selling grills, they're selling, depending on what they're in, or right. kitchen gadgets, other sauces, spices in the Southeast. And they have other things in their uh, um, epitoire, yeah. but uh, mine's just one of them, so. Gotcha. Well, uh, I like it, I love it. Um, I, I think everybody should check it out. At least, you know, at least order one can and try it out. And if you can't find it in, a, in your local stores, barbecue stores, or uh, any of the places that you mentioned that's on Amazon, you can get it to your door usually, yep. you know, the next day. So, <laughs> well, but. I'll tell you on our website too, we have a locator so they uh -huh. can go right in there and, and find wherever they live. They can go down, look at the city, hit the city. It'll tell exactly where they're at. Can they um, buy it directly? To, yeah, they can buy it directly from your website as well. Absolutely. Please. They can. And, and I'll tell the people and you're going to have plenty of them that said, I gave up on that stuff because it kept clogging. We really have adjusted it. Like if you hold your can up, this mm -hmm. one doesn't have the green lid. Eventually right. it'll have a smaller green cap, but that's the one that, uh, that's our new actuator. It's very variable. You can go dribble, you can go fan, you can whatever, and uh, it really works slick. Yeah, it looks different than the one that I, I know that I had uh, yeah, the, initially. Yep. I like the old look better, but this is really functional. Let me get that up there. There you go. Yeah. So people can see it now. You it's see this bit. nozzle more on the higher end olive oils and such. Gotcha. Yeah, it does look a lot different. It's not that that regular Pam type. Regular. Uh, yep. Right. So now, what about the, your your other fats, your tubs? Is that something that you're only selling directly, or is that something they can find on Amazon or anything else? Or yeah, I mean, I've got yeah, we've got a few sellers of the of the tubs um, on Amazon, or they like I said they could buy it from me directly, or or right. uh, check with their barbecue store um, as well. Um, cause we do have several of them carrying it now. So yes. especially that mangalista, um, large, oh, sounds, I, think, I think I might get a bucket of that for myself. So, <laughs> yeah, well, we can make that happen. <laughs> gotcha. Well, thanks Dennis. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else coming up? I mean, is, uh, you think the, uh, COVID starting to die down, you're going to be able to get back out there and I hope so. I hope the, the events and some of the opportunities uh, start happening again for us to get in front of people and. And, you know, have some of them conventions where you can get to see a lot of customers in one place. And, and uh, I just, I want to get out for my own sanity and um, um, looking forward to that. And um, I will say one more thing. We quite possibly will have 
and it's really incredible. It's a sous vide five ounce duck breast. It come frozen. Uh, oh. And um, and who, really, who are you working with on that? Are you working with Cuisine Solutions on that, or? Uh, no, actually, my supplier of my duck fat. Okay. So it'll be our, it'll be our own brand, and it's a chef developed, and um, really wonderful. So we'll see. That's a little farther down the road, but I'm not saying months and months and months, but maybe a couple months we might have some. We'll see. I'm just trying to put more legs under my under my uh, chair. Yeah. Uh, well, also I am a part of the International Sous Vide Association and we have, um, it started about two and a half years ago and okay. they do a uh, annual uh, summit and they just did one in August that was a, it's virtual this year. It was supposed to be in San Francisco. Um, last year they had That's it. Awesome. They had it over by Baltimore, but um, I'm going to put you in touch with the two guys that run it to, uh, we got, you know, a lot of uh, chefs get involved. Uh, Crea, um, which is the the big you know sous vide uh, development up in Virginia and 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 in uh, Paris, uh, we get a lot of uh, you know manufacturers and and home cooks. I mean, we've had we had a, almost three hundred people in it this year virtual. So I'm going to put you in touch. With, wow, uh, never heard of it. That's yeah, awesome. I'll put you in touch Learning. with Mike and Jason, and they'll kind of show you what we do. And and you know we're we're just like a big I wouldn't call it, um, you know, huge, but we're a big, uh, a lot of us are just, um, you know, home cooks or uh, enthusiasts that, that love to talk about sous vide and cooking and, you know, meathead. I'm learning ones. it. I love meat. mine at home. I'm learning yeah. how to do it with the different meats and yeah. it's, uh, it's really been great so far. So I'm excited to learn more. And I really like this product because it's skin on. Uh -huh. So all you do is you take it and you maybe lightly crisscross the skin and get uh, some duck fat in the pan and uh, crisp up that back, lid on, and uh, literally in five minutes, you can have a perfect speed duck breast. And I've awesome. had it, they're killer. Yeah. So they're yeah, just so some, better than I could do. So that's yeah, why. Sous vide works it. really well on duck breast, but but yeah, even Meathead Goldwyn's a part of the sous vide uh, summit. So it's- uh, Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's uh it's a good thing. I'll get you in touch. I'll get you in touch with Mike and Jason, and uh, you guys can talk and see how like you guys can help each other, especially. That so, would be great. That would be sounds super. great. Okay, all right, Dennis. I appreciate Thanks, it. Uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully we'll get through this whole COVID thing and uh, yeah. Yeah. get through get, get through November. And as long as the yeah. get on the other side of November, the world can get back to normal. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping too. <laughs> All righty, sir. That's thanks thanks for being with us. Check out duckfatspray.com. Thanks, Dennis, for being on. And I thanks, will see Jared. you all on the next Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Awesome. Thanks again for joining the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I want to thank Dennis Schuett of Duck Fat Spray one more time. Make sure you check out the links below to uh, their website. And also, you can find the product on Amazon. Make sure you follow the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Make sure you follow the Fire and Water Cooking YouTube channel, Facebook page, Facebook group. Check out the Instagram feed. And I'll see you all again on the next Fire and Water Cooking Podcast.